what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we just finished doing our live stream reactions for nxt this week and boy oh boy did nxt show out tonight we know why they did that obviously aew was having their uh their weekly show dynamite instead of it being on wednesday they moved it uh uh, for this week to be on Tuesday, same time slot as NXT. So WWE and their management decided, you know what? We're going to assemble the Avengers and we're bringing the Hall Stars down here tonight. We had John Cena on the show, Paul Heyman on the show, Asuka on the show. And then there was a surprise at the end. You guys already know who i'm talking about one of the goats one of the greatest wrestling characters ever was at the show they teased it and you weren't sure if they were going to do it but they actually did oh and we had cody on the show so i'm just going to talk about some of the few great things great highlights from the show first and foremost cody starting off the show and this crowd was electric i seen pictures of uh the actual people like lining up like, they were just all the way, a long line in the parking lot just to get to NXT, to the Performance Center or whatnot. So, the line was packed because, obviously, this was going to be a, a very uh, uh, <laughs> star-studded show. So, the line for just NXT itself was just incredibly long. So, that let me know the crowd was going to be amped. And boy, was they amped. When Cody came out there, they were lit. Cody announced, obviously, um... A women's tournament uh coming up and then obviously uh, a men's tournament and the the cody uh the dusty uh tag team tournament so that i think a lot of people kind of figured that was gonna happen but he also announced that he was gonna be the gm of the show for tonight which was pretty cool so he's gonna be involved throughout the show he wasn't just gonna have a one appearance and then that's it um then you have obviously uh uh, Dragonoff, the NXT champion, comes out there to introduce himself. Ilya Dragonoff, man, great champion. Love, love, love the look. Got the suit on. You know, very intense individual. They had a nice back and forth. It's his birthday. It was his birthday today. Crowd chanting him, "Happy birthday!" And then, of course, Dominant comes out there. Rhea comes out there. They're booing this man to oblivion, being disrespectful to Cody, being disrespectful to Dragonoff. And he wants a NXT World Championship uh, opportunity. He wants to face Dragonoff for the NXT title or whatnot. So guess what happens? Cody makes the match, but he says, I know how the Judgment Day gets down, so I'm going to have a special guest referee. And it's not going to be me. No, 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 no. It's going to be L a night yeah no one saw that coming so la night was the guest special guest referee that was a cool surprise crowd went crazy for that i'm like oh they're bringing out the heat tonight overall the matches that were on the show were pretty enjoyable um i i enjoyed they were they were you know i enjoyed what i was able to see in a lot of these matches i'm not going to really go into too much great detail just the the major points of the show uh, we also got to talk about when uh, Paul Heyman uh, pulled up. He was he didn't know how to enter into the building. And then there was a clip that they showed that was posted on Twitter where Paul Heyman was talking to The Rock's daughter. And he point, pointed at his phone with, with the bloodline case. And it was, like he was, it was like he was trying to sell his daughter on potentially joining the bloodline. And that's what kind of Paul Heyman seemed like he was doing on this show recruiting for the bloodline that's very interesting that he would do that especially with her her being the rock's daughter very interesting i don't know if that's just blowing smoke but if you're gonna do something like that if you're gonna tease something that personal you may want to capitalize on it so i don't know if they're gonna do anything with that but that was very interesting that they did that purposely so Paul Heyman was in his recruiter mode since he was going to be in the corner of Braun Breaker. Um, the match with uh, uh, Dragunov and Dominic was a good match. Good uh, NXT match. Good television match. Obviously, you know Dragunov in the, is in a league above Dominic. And Dominic was catching the beats. But Dominic being a, a heel, finding ways to get the upper hand. Of course, you have Rhea 
out there trying to distract LA Knight. And then, of course, at some point, you knew the Judgment Day was going to get involved. You had Dam uh, not Damien. You had uh, Finn Balor rush out there to try to help Dominic. And LA Knight ha not having none of that with his Tim boots on. Knocked him off the ring apron. Then JD comes in there, tries to get into the mix. And then LA Knight hits him out of there, hits him with his finisher, throws him over the top rope. Then Rhea try to get into the mix. But then she ends up getting tripped up by Trick Williams. He ends up catching her. And they have this random locking eyes moment. And then he drops her or whatnot. Even, well, he didn't drop her. She jumped off, you know, kind of jumped off him. But if that was me, I would have, you know, just threw over my shoulder. Get out of here. But ultimately, it wasn't enough. Dragging off was able to hit his finisher for the one, two, three to retain uh, his title. So, which we kind of expected. Fun match. Cool seeing LA Knight out there. Judgment Day weren't able to complete their dastardly deeds. We also got to talk about uh, John Cena and Braun Breaker's interaction. Once again, this crowd was electric. John Cena came out there. They were singing his song. He was like, damn, bro, this is, man, this is amazing, y'all. He was he was vibing where they were singing his song, chanting, holy shit. They were excited that he was there. He was loving the energy that the NXT crowd was bringing. And, you know, he was basically talking about being happy to be on NXT. Braun Breaker comes out there. He has his one, you know, interaction with him. He's like, you know, I don't give a damn who you are, John. You know what I'm saying? I'm here, you know, to take care of business. I'm going to do what I got to do or whatever. And for a second, I thought he was about to cook him because the crowd was chanting, let him cook because that's what John usually does. But he didn't really cook him at all really too much. He kind of, you know. Played it chill, which I appreciate because he didn't have to cook him. We know they're trying to build him up as the next big thing in WWE whenever he gets to the main roster. And then, of course, Braun Breaker sucker, sucker punches him. And John Cena about to hit him with the FU, even though they call it the attitude adjustment. I still call it the FU. But he gets out of there in the nick of time. Gets out of there barely. So we got to talk about, obviously, once again, Paul Heyman's in his recruiting mode. He's in the locker room with Braun Breaker, Braun Breaker is, you know, working out, stretching and stuff like that. And then he's basically, you know, kind of like just trying to hype him up or whatever. And, you know, Braun Breaker's like, yeah, you know, that's cool and all. I'm just, it don't matter who's in front of me, I'm going to break them in half. That's just what it is. And then you have a situation when Braun Breaker leaves, that's when Paul Heyman calls uh, Roman Reigns supposedly as as something to tell him, you know, like, hey, we may have, you know, I'm liking this Braun Breaker kid. Like I said, he's been in this recruiting bag, it seemed like, this entire show. So, we get to the main event, and the main event has an extra stipulation because of Cody Rhodes implementing it. Whoever wins out of this main event will be in a triple threat match to see who will be the number one contender for Ilya Dragunov's NXT title. It will be between Baron Corbin, Di Dijakovic or Dijak whoever, however you want to call him whoever you want to call him Dijak and whoever wins out of Braun Breaker and Carmelo Hayes that's how he set it up which pretty interesting way um match itself was serviceable it was fine he had John Cena in his uh in uh Melo's corner and you had uh Paul Heyman in uh Braun Breaker's corner it was a fine match. Not their best match that I've seen from them, but it was an enjoyable match. And then, of course, there's some shenanigans that happen. Braun Breaker loves to end people's careers with steel steps. So when they get, there's a part of the match where they get to the outside. Braun Breaker picks up the steel steps. Looks like he's about to end another man's career. John Cena says, no, no, no. And he stops that. And then he actually attacks Braun Breaker. He should have got disqualified, but I don't think the ref saw it. I think he was distracted. Talking to Paul Heyman. He was distracted with Paul Heyman. Then Solo comes out of nowhere. Then they start fighting. John Cena and Solo just start fighting to the back or whatnot. And it, oh, and it, what's crazy, I'm thinking maybe some other, somebody else is going to get involved. But no, no. Melo was able to capitalize and he beat him. Beat him. Beat him fairly clean. You know what I'm saying? He didn't have to, there was no outside interference. He got the job done. He beat uh, uh, Carmelo Hayes, and he's going to be advancing to uh, the triple threat match to see who's going to be the number one contender for the uh, NXT uh, championship to see who they'll face, uh, who will face um, Dragunov. 
or whatnot. So after the match, of course, Braun Breaker being Braun Breaker, you're not going to take that loss lightly. Speared the bejeebus out of Carmelo Hayes, and he says, I'm the ba biggest badass in WWE. And then you hear the gong. And I'm like, oh, my God, no way. Now, they teased it since last week. They teased NXT and who's going to be on the show. And then you would hear the gong at the end of the at the end of the, the little the commercial. And obviously people was like, is that the Undertaker gong? What's happening here? We thought, we speculated. But to see the Undertaker come out there in his American badass gimmick with the motorcycle, oh my goodness, that was awesome. He drove out there around the ring with the motorcycle, crouching, holy shit, because that's a holy shit moment. The Undertaker is on N. X T. What? <laughs> he gets in the ring. Barn breakers in there. Oh, what not staring him down. He's like, hey man. Hey, get your old ass out of here. That's basically what he said. Get your old ass out of here. Or oh, whatnot. And the Undertaker's like, you know what? I've been watching you for a while, kid. You're gonna do some great things. You're gonna be a, a you know a great a great talent. You know. But not today. Boop. <laughs> he just punches him right in the face and socks him right in the face, bro. You, 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 you're gonna be the future. But today, mm -mm. Boop. socked him right in the face, bro. Right in the face. He ends up falling down. Then he hits him with a nice choke slam. Shout out to Braun Breaker for actually jumping into the choke slam to make it even that more uh, devastating. Hits him with a choke slam. Beautiful moment. Crowd going crazy. Picks up the mic again. He said, there's always going to be that, you know, older, bigger, stronger person around the corner. And I'm the biggest, the baddest badass there ever was. And drops the mic. As we all know, man. Undertaker is, <laughs> of course, the certified badass, man. It was dope to see that. And he embraced Carmelo, showed him some love. That was a great way to end off the show. Everyone that was at that NXT show, you saw something that you'll probably never see again. That was fantastic. That was crazy, bro. We got The Undertaker on a Tuesday night. I don't know what else to say. That was crazy. That was fan-fucking-tastic. Fantastic. So comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy NXT today? Do you guys feel like it was too much overkill with the, you know... The legends and the goats being a part of the show. Did you guys appreciate seeing John Cena, LA Knight, Oscar, Paul Heyman, and uh, C Cody Rhodes and The Undertaker tonight? Do you guys appreciate that? Or do you feel like it's a little bit overkill? Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road 250K. And I'm seeing you on the speed of YouTube, wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all. King me. See you on the next one. Peace.